All right. Hello, my CNC brothers and sisters. It's the Garrett and Kate show. That's what somebody has said in the comments before. Uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome to our Wednesday night live CNC help uh, live, whatever we want to call it. Should we have a name for this thing, Kate? Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, That's I a mean, good question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about CNC router, CNC business, router bits, whatever you want to talk about. And and awesome. we're also going to touch a little bit back on business today. If you remember, we were mentoring Kate and she mentioned something today, a couple of things today when we were talking on the phone. So we'll we'll get into that because it's it's good stuff to talk about because we all go through the things that uh, she was talking about. So one of them I remember in my head, the other one I don't really remember. But uh <clears throat> Uh, first of all, who all we got? T uh, Tim is there. So Tim, Tim was uh, one of the lucky few who has been able to play with the beast, the the new router bit that's going to be coming out. And yes. uh, he's he's been messaging me with profuse thank yous, and even shot a video on <laughs> um, on um, on the YouTube or on the, <clears throat> on the Facebook group. Uh, CNC wow, cool. Groups. And, and he had a hundred running at a hundred inches per minute. Um, I forget what a step over was. It was just like, you know, you know, didn't even know there was wood there kind of thing. So <laughs> what's anxious to see what you're going to do with What's it. his CNC? What's he run? Uh, Tim, I don't, I don't remember. Tim, you'll put in the comments <clears throat> what machine you run. Uh, so the Beast, though, is going to be running, coming out. Uh, it's about two more weeks. So I'm, I'm a little bit behind on a couple of things. But yeah. so anyway, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. You can see over my shoulders is IDC Woodcraft. So that's where I'm from. And we have Kate, uh, Kate yep. from uh, uh, Rise and Shine Wood Science. And so we do this yeah. every Wednesday night to talk CNC, help you with your questions and what have you. And first of all, we're just going to say hi. Like we've been, Dion. Hello, Dion, and yeah. Mike. 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 Is it new? I maybe. I'm, I think I've seen Mike on here a couple times before. I think I have too. We got a couple mics, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mike. Michael. And, yeah. Richard and Gary's there. Chris. Hello. Hello. And yeah. it's not telling. Oh, we're sitting on thirty-one people. So it's a Wednesday evening. The weather is getting nice out. It's kind of warm. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I tell you, someone last week was asking me, "Garrett, you look okay. You look kind of tired." And I didn't really think about it. But then I'm thinking about it tonight. I take my my exercise walks right every night. Uh -huh. And uh, so I just literally just got back from a four-mile walk, uh, averaging about walk. Four, 14 uh 14 minutes, just a little over 14 minutes per mile. So, That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I've been sitting on my ass for the last two years building this business. And it's like, <laughs> I got to get back out there. And literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and you just had eye surgery and everything. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to give yourself oh, a little, little grace. Yeah. Yeah. We got a Facebook user. Oh, switched over. Phil. Oh, it's Phil. So Phil, uh, Phil had uh, called me just not too long ago. He said, Garrett, I want to watch you and Kate tonight. How do I find you? All right. And so he uh, I said, I'll oh, just pop on the YouTube channel at about eight o'clock. Yeah. Watch for the link. I'll, uh, and I was a little bit delayed in posting that link. And Dan came by and visited today. Oh, very uh, Dan cool. Dan is another CNC brother who builds pro playgrounds. He's been p building playgrounds for like 25 years now. Oh, gosh. And it was kind That's of a cool. kind of crazy. I mean, you notice my shirt. <clears throat> my brother from Hawaii, we had family reunion over the weekend and my brother from Hawaii came in with his family. And so then he came up here. So we all had a reunion down in Tennessee. Then he came up here for a couple of days. We hung out and he gave me this shirt from Hawaii. And Very so nice. In his, in his honor, everybody, I am wearing it in this, uh, in our life. <laughs> That's tonight. very cool. Mike, Mike, if you happen to be watching, there you go, brother. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so blessed. Uh, we got good family relationships in my family. We've always been tight despite the distances. Uh, we all see each other multiple times a year, except for the one from Hawaii. That's good. That's so, good. I wish I could see yeah. my son a little more often. He's in Hawaii. He lives in Hawaii on um, Oahu. He's on the army base. Okay. okay. So Just, he actually gets to come know. home um, the end of June. Uh, basically, he gets like most of the month of June off and has to be back on base July 9th. But he is um, going to see his girlfriend. She's in the military, too. And she lives in Washington State. So he's going to see her for two weeks. 
and then us for two weeks. I'm like, just bring her home. Like, yeah. I don't want to spend all my time with you just for two weeks. Like, come on. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, rock and roll. We got a couple more on here. Mark, we already got a compliment, a comment from Mark, I think. Uh, let's bring him up. Hi, Mark. Uh, I need to learn how to make an inlay. I will be watching your videos. Okay. Yeah, I've got a complete walkthrough video for making an inlay. I don't have it here, but you even get the the, the file for free, right? I just watch the video. Just how to make it, how, how to make an inlay on a CNC router. That's what you search for. Yeah. Um, and mine will come up. My videos have the green bands, and it's a lengthy video, but it's complete, complete walkthrough from start to end. But literally, uh, I take two pieces of wood and said, we're going to take these two, and we're going to make it look like this. And we went through the design, what bits you should be using, the entire setup. Yeah. So, um, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, um, well, I see. see we have, if we scroll up just a little bit, I think it's um, Bullion Renegade. At 802, he said, hi, new subscriber, I'm lost. Oh, God bless you, sir. <laughs> welcome, God welcome you, to, yeah, yeah, there you are. Uh, yeah. yeah, welcome to the club as a beginner. I was talking to our uh, mutual friend, Joe, which we were talking about today. We found out that he's talking to you, too, uh, yes. one of our CNC brothers. And Joe is someone who last year picked up the long mill which is the, a starter machine that I encourage people to buy uh, for the price. It's a good economical price um, and a, a robust machine. And um, so he just, he was dumber in a box of rocks, just like the rest of us were when we first started, right? Just looked at it cross-eyed deer in the headlights going, what the hell am I going to do with this contraption? And he sent me Fair. a picture. Did he send it to you too? The picture of the flag that he carved? Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah very nice. We talked about a little so, bit last night. And... Yeah, uh, I wish he was here because I'd say, Joe, leave a comment for, for our friend here and give him some encouragement. <laughs> He's going to be like, darn it, I missed it. Yeah, but I will tell you, um, go to my website, idcwoodcraft.com. On the front page, that, scroll down, you'll see, uh, download the list of videos. It's all the videos I've created. They've been sorted for you. You start right at the top. And, and just work your way through those videos. That'll get you up and running. Kate, you you worked with that list, didn't you? I did. I did. I didn't have it quite as organized because that was a modification you kind of made about when I was about halfway through my journey. But yes, when I started, <laughs> when I placed the order for my CNC, I was like, all right, now I got to figure out how to operate this darn thing. So um, <coughs> we, I just kind of started at the top and um, I have my notebook here. Y'all are going to laugh. I still use this sometimes. I bought a book like this from Walmart and it has all of the notes from every, every single video that like I watched. There's just like pages and pages and pages of notes. But look, I found this the other day. You guys might laugh at me. The first time I used my CNC, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Touch probe, <laughs> worth the money. Number one, I like the paper trick. Using the touch uh, with when the zero. Oh my gosh. Creating a piece using uh, your design software. Push it to the limits. That's uh, uh, this must have been one of my own personal quotes because I said, push it to the limits. If you mess it up, well, that's part of the learning curve. So mm -hmm. you can tell the very first time I used my CNC, I was already in that mindset of, we're going to do this. It's a learning curve. You just, you have to learn if you don't mess up, like what is the point of that? So, um, yeah, right. you just, of you course, gotta we start with those videos and just work your way down. And then yeah. once you kind of get your feet wet and you learn a few things, then go out to the shop, try a few things. And if that, you know, you mess it up, try, try again. Just yeah. I was, I was on the, uh, on the phone with uh, someone yesterday who said they were brand new and, they said, what advice could you give me? And I said, number one, be patient. Just you're going to have to be patient because you're going to you're going to run into times where you're going to want to throw that. You're just going to get stuck and you're going to what? Why? You don't know why you're stuck and it gets frustrated. Yeah. Number two is focus on the design software, whatever you're using. Focus on learning it. Both Kate and I work with the Vectric software. Uh, and that's the one I recommend. It's the most common one out there. Uh, and it's, it's, 
pretty well built. I think it's uh, it looks yes. a little old school. <clears throat> um, I think I think they could update it uh, as far as the look of it, and like, but it still works, right? It's 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 yeah. uh, gives you a lot of flexibility. And it does a lot of a lot of different things that a lot of people aren't aware of. So yeah, you just start with the basics start with like the top row of buttons and just kind of work your way down and kind of learn about each one you can even google certain <laughs> buttons like what is you know get the name of it and google it and learn all about that button and then keep working down because yeah. yeah it makes your life a lot easier um, <clears throat> yeah and also uh i would ask if you decide to get it uh, the vectric software or even the long mill in my videos in the description uh, there's a link. You can use that. If you do that, I end up getting a little commission that buys me a burger and a beer. Right? <laughs> so, every, whatever I can yeah. go to my local bar. It's called Shipley's. It's kind of a dive bar, but it's best burgers on the planet. <clears throat> and, uh, I love a good burger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you come down, uh, you can do it. Kate was supposed to come down last week, and the girl got sick on me. Caught COVID. Screw <laughs> yeah, the COVID stuff. She just come on yeah. down. It was awful. Yeah. It's still been still been nasty. But right. all right. right, let's see who we got pop in the yeah. All right. We have see Tim Nudd. Hi Tim. Welcome back. Yep. Thank yep. you. We I am feeling Tim better. Before. He's Tim's the one that I was just talking about in the beginning where I gave him the, the beast. Ah. Tim yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I see Jen's back see, on. Hey, Kate's girl. still at him. Kate's still at him. Oh, is she? Yeah. I Hi, see Jen. Jen. Here. She's awesome. Right. I love her. George, Yay. we got Gary. Recently bought oh, your uh, Gary Wolf at 805. He says, recently bought your super smooth surfacing bit. So good. So far, so good. You may have yeah, to talk so about that for just a minute. Let's so, have at it because you were showing me. You got this really cool little project you're working oh, on. Oh, man. Okay, you guys. So, well, I just first of all, we're, just so we know, we're talking about this router bit right here. Yes. That's the ultra smooth. Uh, one inch and the one and a half. It's the ultra smooth series uh, surfacing yeah. bits that I DC would craft. It's so one I inch, have one and a half inches. This is the one and a half inch, or there's a one inch and there's a three quarter inch for the one eighth shank CNC routers. Um, on IDC Woodcraft's the only I, uh, router bit company on the planet that has a surfacing bit for the one eighth shank. Nobody else will do it because it costs too much to make. So <laughs> there's not enough of a margin in, in it. But, you know, I know the demand is out there, so I, so I got them. Uh, yeah. The Ultra Smooth is, <clears throat> I took this design and I worked with my tooling company. We, we reworked the angles on it. And we added a flute to it because traditionally they only have three flutes. Uh, we modified the, the, that cut angle there. So it's a little bit less of an angle. <clears throat> yeah. So it can hold up a lot uh, to a lot more wear um so it doesn't wear out as fast and then also the grind along the bottom of it that angle that bevel is much lower and that that gives you that just creates a smoother cut on it so go ahead kate oh no the... no you're fine i'm glad that you're talking about it because they need to know all right so this is um an epoxy project i want to i want to tell you just a little bit about this project so i am making actually garrett a river table I'm very excited, but I have worked with a ton of epoxy, but not a ton of deep pour epoxy. So I wanted to make this little like side table for myself and see how the epoxy did and everything else. So this is the table. Look at this. Look at this piece. It is like one, like a little under two inches thick. Okay. This is some walnut that I had laying around. Now here's this, this side I oiled. None of this has been sanded. This is the other side of it. Now I want you to notice, I surfaced this bit down to, it was a 0 0.1 inches in depth and about a 20% step over. And I'm gonna sh kind of show it at the camera angle. You can still see the rungs. Do you see how smooth that is though? Like that is insane. You guys see it okay? I don't know. Garrett, can you see? You have to tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually, I was just kind of my, I was looking at the shine that was that's on there. That's yeah, just so, with the surfacing bit without sanding. This is no sanding. So obviously, <laughs> like, you can still see the rungs, like, on the black epoxy, especially right in there. Like, yep. you can kind of see them going around. But 
look at like I know a lot of surfacing bits when I've done other epoxy projects, but look at the smoothness just right here, like on the edge of the epoxy. There is literally no chipping whatsoever because sometimes like you'll have to come back in and kind of like put a little piece of Tyvek tape and touch it up where it got nicked, but no sanding folks, no sanding. I was, um, I was chatting with Joe last night. I kind of had to laugh a little bit because he goes, well, can you just hand sand that? And I was like, let's think about this, Joe, dear friend, sweet friend. <laughs> <laughs> he knew, he knew where my heart was. And I said, now, if I was going to work smart or work hard and not smart, that's what I would do. I would hand sand it. I'm going to tell you right now, it took me 12 minutes per side to get it perfectly flat, to get it so buttery smooth in 12 minutes. I could have not gotten that that smooth or that flush <laughs> in 24 minutes for one side there's just no way so right. i was super excited i i love that bit i've always i i love all your bits but the surfacing bits i do a ton of work with and so when that came out like that i was like oh butter that's just amazing so much less yeah. sanding Right. Yeah. Uh, a tip for CNC projects, right? Even if you have got a, a, a milled piece of lumber from, from the store and you're getting ready to work on a, a project, you always want to surface it first. Um, yeah. cause, cause, cause even milled lumber has its deviations, the humidity will affect it and because the grain changes through the wood. Uh, yep. it, it'll, it'll, it'll be different thicknesses. So you always just want to take a little skin cut off of it to get it all flat. And particularly if the finer the project, the finer the engraving that you're doing, the carving, uh, the more important that is. And, of course, always tram your CNC router uh, when you start. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about this. Quick. Give me a second. I get something. Yeah, sure. Um, so. Well, oh, yeah. A lot of people okay. ask me about tramming. Right. And so you yeah. can use, there's lots of different ways you can do it. You've got the little inclinometer gauge. I think I got it over here. I see we've got a couple new people. I'm just going to say hi. Hi, Robert. Um, new here and new to CNC. Well, welcome. So nice to have you. Uh, Ricardo, welcome back. So you have your long mill coming in next week. Yay! Congratulations. Um, your videos have been a great start to learning the machine and V-Carve. Yes, so helpful. Yes. Totally yeah, agree. Yeah. Well, awesome. Congratulations on getting your new, you're uh, excited. Your new long mill. Yep, I think I uh, shipped some bits out to Ricardo a couple weeks ago. Oh, very cool. So I remember, yeah. Uh, Those are such fun. Yeah. You like look at them and inspect <laughs> them and like every little thing now when you're new. Right. They're so fun. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you get, get all your new toys in. So when it comes to <laughs> tramming your CNC router, right, there's, there's several ways uh, you can do it. Uh, tramming is vital when you first get your CNC router, right? Mm -hmm. And what tramming is, is <clears throat> that axis of the of the, rotor, the rotary axis, if you put a line down the middle of it, you want that to be perpendicular to your table, both uh, side to side and front to back. <clears throat> and so you have to check that and make your adjustments. So what you would do is get your spoil board uh, set up, do a really thin cut on your spoil board. You may have steps on it. It doesn't really matter. You just, if you see steps, that means your router's out of tram, right? It's, it'll it's exaggerated. There's cuts that are like that. And that's what the steps are, right? But you yeah. just want to, you want to kind of get that. Well, you before you do that, you want to just try to get it leveled up or trammed in a little bit. Um, you can use an inclinometer. This is yeah, really nice. easy. Yeah, it's super, super easy. Um, like you can put it up against your router and zero it out and just set it down on the table. And it'll tell you your angle difference between the router and the table. That's cool. I've never seen that Fif before. Fif fif 15 bucks off of Amazon. Nice. I'll have to I'll put have a to link for that. Oh, by the way, speaking of links, uh, if you're on the Facebook, uh, the comment section above the video or if you're in youtube the description the section below the video um there are links for the surfacing bit i think is in there so is the hog uh the beast is not available yet and um <clears throat> for cnc insiders 
right? So when I release yeah. the new when I release new bits, uh, I tell CNC insiders first, and I will give them a discount code to that. And that discount code will not be. It's only like for a few days, and then after that, it's gone. Yeah. And then I'll release it to the public. Um, also, Kate's Kate's CNC group, right? You tell yep. them about that. The I've links for my... that are. Here or there, here or there, wherever you are. So we've yeah. got uh, Women Who CNC. If you are a woman and you're watching and you have not commented, um, I can't see that you're on, but welcome. And we do have on Facebook a group for strictly women. Um, it's just Women Who CNC. We're having a great group of women. Uh, we're building each other up. We're asking all those complicated questions just like they do in any other group. And we are doing our best to help uh, one another come along with different subjects. Sometimes we women just like to speak a different language and learning. So it's just really, um, it's a really great group of women that are very knowledgeable and different seasons uh, on their CNC journey. So come join us. Yep. So link that where we're at. There's a link uh, in the <laughs> in the description of the video. So uh, yeah, sign up for that. Ladies only, by the way. Ladies, yes, only. ladies only. Okay, tramming. Let's get back into that. And then there's a question here from uh, from uh, Bubba for you. Okay. Um, the next thing, the, this is what I like to use. It's it's just a whipped out tramming bar. Okay. And what it is? Have you used this? I have not. No, I've actually, knock on wood, I've never had any tramming problems. Uh, okay. So what I did is I just took a piece of wood, did a saw cut right here, saw cut right there. I drilled a quarter inch hole there and uh, on this side, <clears throat> took a couple old router bits and used uh, all purpose screws to clamp the the uh, one the bad router bit there and another bad router bit there. And you now you put that in your router and you swing it around and you, you check the gap all the way around. And if you can get this, a 12 inch uh, where it's the same gap all the way around, um, yeah. you've got, you've got a trammed machine. Okay. Good to know. So I'm, I'm actually going to come up with a tramming bar, make it available. Right. That'd be cool. Rock, metal rod. Okay. So let's rock well, and roll I, here. I there. knew there had to be a good reason for those broken bits. I knew I was holding on to them for a purpose. That, that's right. That's right. I There's think one day. Trammy barge. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to laugh at me. I think one day I'm going to make a charcuterie board. You know, how people make it yeah. corks and flowers. I'm going to have one of all my broken router bits. Like this is like my wall of my my charcuterie board of learning with all uh, of my router bits and caps encapsulated old, in epoxy uh, clear <laughs> clear epoxy them in there all right yeah. let's get on to some comments here so baba let's see this question is for kate the flag you made the epoxy, the flag made. what type of material did you use to carve it in so i just used a live edge birch i really liked it it was an easy carve um birch is a great wood to do with epoxy um it's really very easy. Um, if you watch the videos, you get to the end of it, you'll learn that um, if you just s seal it before you pour any type of epoxy in it with some sanding sealer or any type of paint in general, you'll get a really great result. So you don't have to use epoxy, but sanding sealer on those light wood, um, light live edge woods is going to save you a ton of a ton of headaches and a ton of product. So sanding sealer. You know what? I have uh, I got some sealer, but I was not happy with it. So and then it wasn't sanding sealer. So I'll have to try that out. I love that stuff. So, I don't know where yeah. I found it. I think I found it at Lowe's and I was just like, you know what, we're just gonna give it a whirl. And I did, and I almost use it on everything anymore. All right. All right, um, let's see. Sanding sealer. Just want to yep. write that down. And the inclinometer, I will link the inclinometer as well. Okay. Um, it says Phil Meadows at 807. I'll let you pop that up there. Ah, Vector Cast tutorials about lithophanes. Um, interested in your comments on this technique. So, uh, Jack, I've not seen Jack in the shop today. Here, Jack is the lithophane, lithophane king. He sent me, uh, I, I've never done it, I've done a 3D printing right 
And <clears throat> he sent me lithophanes with the LED lighting inside. He made this project and it's got four sides to it. And he created lithophanes and he took pictures off my Facebook and me with the grandkids. Right. And, oh, and cool. did this lithophane. And <clears throat> I wish I could, I wish I had it here now to show you because it's a four side lit box. And so you have a little adjustable switch of the, the brightness of the light. And, and it just brings wow. out this image. Yeah, you just see that when you're holding the, the plastic pane up, it's just, you know, what the hell is that? But then when you put light behind it, it's like, oh, my God. There's one oh. of me holding my new grandson, Nikolai. So, unfortunately, That's Phil, cool. I am not. Kate, you have any experience on lithophane? I don't, unfortunately, no. Okay, so what lithophane is, <clears throat> it's taking an image in a, on a 3D printer. And it's basically a very, uh, usually clear or like a white, uh, a white filament. But they're mm -hmm. getting away from filament, from what I understand. But um, um, and it's just it's it's three D printed, and it's various variation in thickness. It's almost kind of like the photo V carve, right? How you okay. have the wider V and the short narrower Vs. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like that. Uh, this is just thicker and thinner. So not as much light can pass through some areas as it can in the other areas. Hmm. <clears throat> so I wish I'll Jack have to in look the that shop. Up. Yeah, I wish Jack, it's something I'd like to get into. So sorry, Phil, I can't help you, but uh, we get if you find Jack, I know he's got a YouTube channel. By the way, Kate has a YouTube channel as well called yep. Rise and Shine Wood Signs. So make sure you subscribe to that. And if you're on Please. this YouTube channel, subscribe to this one. And uh, Push that thumbs up button, whether you're on Facebook or yes, or, please or YouTube. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see, but I can't open uh, the files. Okay, just a quick one. Um, so you bought the five ten. So that's a shark. Um, been watching the videos just to purchase the starter bit set, the nine piece set but I can't open the files. So, so I'm assuming you meant you can't open the files. So yeah. they're zipped files. So you have to unzip them first. They're zipped means they're compressed. And so you can't open them without unzipping them. And basically, let's see if I can show you real quick how to do that. Um, I'm going to share screen. Share screen. I'm probably going to have to open it up first. Yeah, I think yeah. I have to open it up first. Um, okay, there's one right there. So we've got a Windows. Let's see if it's showing up. Um, I think, I think, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay, can you see my directory? Yep, you're all good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So right now I've got my files big. I, I make them bigger. Uh, first of all, in your directory, you'll have a, a, a thing that says view or a little icon over here. That's just like a little box. Depends on the which type of directory you're opening up. You can click that and change the size of your icon. So I have large icons. I like to see okay. what what I got. And you'll see the folders. Uh, they look like manila folders, but you'll see one with a zipper on it. And that's what you have, um, Phil. And so, or not Phil, it's a uh, bullion. It. bullion. Okay. And what you do is you click on it. So it's highlighted blue and you should either at the top where there's a little uh, extract all will show up. Um, if it doesn't show up there, then right click with your mouse. And if you don't have a mouse, get a mouse. <laughs> yes, I've seen way too many without a mouse. Like, yeah, yeah, you kill yourself. If you yeah. don't uh, right right click over the directory, and you should have uh, an extract all icon yep. as well. So when you click that and you hit ex extract all, it's going to open up a window and it's going to ask you what directory you want to put it in, and yep. you can just let it at default or change the name of the directory i'll just call this uh we'll call it uh, cnc right yeah. and so and, and as a side it. note on this really quickly when you're um doing unloading files like let's say you buy something from etsy and it comes as like some of them will come as um, a dxf a svg a png an ai file 
If there's only one type of file that you want, you can go into that extracted file and delete the ones that you don't want and then go back in and just extract the one file that you do. Mm. Because what happens is all of those, like say you buy five files and each file has um, five things in it, you're going to have all, you know, 20 different extra files that you don't need that are just cluttering up your computer. So if you don't need an AI file or never going to use it, just delete it and then extract mm. what you do need. And I usually put them yeah. into my downloads. Then that okay. way if I need to reference, yep. it's right there. Yep. AI file is the uh, Adobe Illustrator. Yes. Uh, so what Sorry. she's saying is you can double click this, um, the, the icon as well, the folder as well, and it'll open up. Now everything in here is compressed. So what she's saying is, oh, I don't want these files here. Then I can, uh, while it's in the extracted, uh, unextracted State. mode, I can come in and just delete them. Yes. And, and then, then go back and extract. You got it. You yeah, got it. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. All right. Um, See, we've got some other hellos. We've got Gary, Gary from Greetings. Washington State. Yeah. Yeah. Jen says you have to be willing to fail fabulously. I love that. Jen. What a beautiful way to put it, Jen. I, I <laughs> hats off to you, sister. <laughs> oh my fail gosh, fabulously. that's so funny. And you, you know what fabulous failing is? Damn it! Shit! And all kinds of other words. And then you go, all right. Can't do anything about it. Let's get back to it. <laughs> That's a fabulous yeah. fail. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can tell you, I've whew, I've stormed out of here a few times and been like, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm walking away. I'm walking away. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you something really quickly, a little lesson I've learned about that. Sometimes you need to walk away. When I was first starting out and I first had my first one-on-one -on -one with Garrett, he told me this. He said, if you are hungry, if you are angry, if you are sad, if you are depressed, if you are going through something emotionally, if whatever emotion is other than like a normal clean slate, do not go C and C because there are so many steps that you have to take to ensure accurate results. And if you are all over the place emotionally or you're just like, ticked off about something in life this thing is not going to make that any better okay let's just get that out there right now because you're going to walk out 10 times more pissed off than you walked in to begin with <laughs> you're just going to be pissed off at something totally different now so all right, all right. go get it go 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 get a cup of coffee with the idc woodcraft coffee mug <laughs> and then chill out go, go have a drink and walk sometimes you just you have to walk away from it because i will be so invested in a project sometimes i'm like for the love of god why is this not working what am i doing wrong why is the software doing this what is the machine doing i've shut off everything i've restarted everything it's still doing it <sighs> walk away give yourself five minutes think through the process and you'll go that's it. That's what it is. And you'll come back and everything right. will be fine. So sometimes give yep. yourself a little grace. Yeah. But in, in, in every walk of life, we have to start somewhere and we have to stumble, right? If yes. we don't stumble, you know, we're not going to learn. There, there's a, uh, a saying, I don't know who it is, but I love the old sayings, right? Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, growth comes with adversity. So yeah. if you're pissed off, overwhelmed, you know, you, you yeah. basically what's happening is you're, you're, you don't have enough clarity yet to understand what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to, your, your context has to expand. Right. Yes. Um, and, and so that's, you're in the process of, of expansion and learning new stuff. So that's kind of what that's about. Yeah. All right, John, I tried to do a V carve to make some signs. Okay. We're already leaning towards Kate here. Cause she's the sign queen. Uh, a couple of them turned out. But many of them, the letters seem to bleed into each other. Can you give some advice to prevent <clears throat> this? Sure. So I would suggest when you're doing a V-carve, um, one, I would start with your spacing within your Vectric software. Um, number two is your depth and the type of bit that you're using. So if you don't have a flat depth on your um, lettering, of course, it's going to go down and it's going to go as wide as it possibly can. So then, of course, that's going to create um, issues. My primary thing that I think that you probably are using a flat depth and you're just all of your letters are squished 
you will notice that, um, especially in Arial fonts, if letters are a little bit wider, you need to use the um, text edit or the, the spacing tab within Vectric. And you can go in and use your, I believe it's like control and then um, the space bar. Your Vectric open? I do not, but I can. Let me hang on one second. Okay, while well, you're bringing that up. Unless you've got yeah. epoxy resin designs is shown up or watching on YouTube. Oh, and, very cool. Yep. And uh, Wade. Hi, Wade. Matthew. Uh, Wade says he hopes you're feeling, he's glad that you're feeling better. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And Chris said, uh, Chris said it's like learning to ride a motorbike. He, he was taught to fall off safely before, you know, you could actually <laughs> ride. Which is, yeah. well, with something like that, you need to know how to fall. Um, uh, so, uh, Jerry, you haven't picked up your Phantom yet. I was just talking to them on the phone today. I had a little... Uh, oh, I hate that dumb thing. Uh, Brooks, I had a little foobar with my Phantom last week. Um, the but Something must have been in the nut or something, because I was tightening it up. Because um, I was going to be working on that big piece of maple here running. I want to run the beast through this thing yeah. and, um, at a thousand inches per minute. That's what I want to get it to at three quarters of an inch deep. And oh. okay, I see that Kate, I'll bring that up in just a second. Okay. And, uh, and then when I was tightening the collet up about halfway up the tight and something, I could just feel something grabbing a little bit, but it wasn't enough to make me like say, Ooh, something's wrong here. And nope. I tighten it up and, and I, I had to use a cheater bar to get the whole thing off, uh, and it like you know stripped down, not completely stripped, half the thread. Something like something got in there, like a piece of metal or something, to cause some damage like that. I'm really sensitive to cross threading, so I would have known if Ooh. I'd squirreled it. But I got it fixed, yeah. So we're good. Okay, so Kate is going to show you um, about the. Right. Um, so you will have oh, to spacing. Yes, so you'll have to ignore the blinking. My apologies for that. I, I can't see blinking right now. So, Kate, zoom in on the letter. So, there we go. All right. Is that a good spacing? A little bit. A okay. little bit. A little bit. A little more? There you go. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit it. You have to remember that we are taking part of the screen. Here, I'm just going to give you a full screen, take our pictures away. There we go. No, you're fine. Okay, so we've got hello highlighted over here in uh, under the create vectors tab. There is a edit spacing in curve. So that would be the third. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah. It's the fourth row of icons down. Uh, right, third row. The letter T. Third row. Third row, okay. and it's got one, the little A B yes. C kind of like on a curve. Okay, so if you click in between these letters, you'll see um, a plus sign, and if you click that you can bring these letters closer together, okay? So, but if you were to hit control, oops, that will bring them, sorry, that will bring them even closer together. And if you yeah. hit shift and then right click on your mouse, you can move them further apart. So, so right now your cursor, Kate, uh, yes. is your cursor on your screen right between the H and the E? It was just a moment ago. Okay, because it's- Yeah, it's, I feel like there's a little bit of a lag. Yeah, on my screen, it's hanging down to the right. Oh, so it's kind of okay. weird. So so in order to spread those letters like that, you have to place your cursor between the letters. Yes. If you want to spread out. So yes. if, if you're seeing what I'm saying, she is putting her cursor between the H and the E when she's yes. doing that. And you, I'm seeing it bounce around at the lower right. Yes. And if you, again, if you hit shift and then use a left mouse click, on your mouse, it's going to spread them further apart. Now, if you just hit, um, if you just use your left mouse clicker, you can bring them together when they click. So it's shift Switch. to move them apart and none to bring them back together. Right. And change your font to a, to like a squirrely, swirly font. So you can get some overlapping letters, a script. Yeah. Okay. So if you're not seeing the, the, the toolbar that she's brought up, it's not okay. It's a little bit of a delay. It's in there now. Okay. 
So here's one. Okay, so, so the E like, and the L and the L and the L and the O are all crossing over each other, bleeding into each other. Yes. So let me close. Let me close this. Um, so we can come back into the edit spacing. And then I'm just going to, again, hold shift, left mouse click. And I'm going to pull these together. Now, a lot of these fonts, you're going to notice. Now, you're going to say, well, Kate, now that just that L came apart and that's not going to link up. What I would do from here is I would actually go into the node edit mode and I would lengthen this L or I would kind of lean it into the L, the other L a little bit. So then that way you have that connection because with script fonts, I see so many people that do script fonts and they don't connect their cursive letters. And I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's a script font for a purpose. So I just want to show you one little sidebar. If you were to highlight all of this, um, now you're going to notice the two L's won't be connected. But if you use your weld function under edit objects and you click that, you're going to get this notification here. And we want to replace um, the vectors. We don't want to keep them. So I'm going to hit replace. And then you will notice that these all come together. But this isn't something I would even want. I wouldn't want this little gap here between the H and the E. You would want this to be smooth. So that's, again, where you could use that function to bring the E a little bit closer. Um, you'll notice between like the E and the L here how it's really smooth. That's what you want. You want your bit to just be able to transfer in there and just go right into the next letter. So, so this is where this is where she would edit with nodes and nodes yes. are where you can nodes are like transition points for all the vectors. A vector yes. is a, a vector is a line. Right. And so basically yeah. from node to node is a line. And so mm -hmm. the nodes are connection points. So yeah. go, go over to the H and the E and then you can show how you might. So I have, have um, so I hit in on my computer for a shortcut and it just brings up nodes. Um, so I would go in here and I would actually cut this vector here. And well, then I would, oh, was it okay. lagging? Yeah, are you on the L right now? Yes. Okay, go go do do it on the A, do it where the H crosses the E. It'll make more sense. The H crosses into the E. Oh, here. Yeah. This little funny yeah. So, part so here. So you got that little funny part there. So how how you'd smooth that out? Yeah. So I would just grab this most interior node right here, and I would just you can bring this out a little bit. But see, this has a. A curve in here so what I would do personally is I would cut this vector let me see here I've got a video that walks through all the nodes what I would do Kate yeah. is I would just delete I would just delete that node hover yeah. over it and hit the D that's what I was trying to in. get there yeah it was being my computer's being weird Kinda, oh, so you reconnected there. Yeah, and then, well, that didn't even do it like I wanted it to, but I personally would just come down here and kind of bring it like this. Okay. And then kind of smooth it out. It's kind of hard to see because I'm so zoomed in that it's hard for me to see what's what. And then okay. I would grab my scissors from here and I'd get rid of that. There we go. And now it's smoothed out. Yeah. So that would be something that I would do like that. I'm just trying right. to account for, because I know there's a really bad lag between me talking and me working, and I can't see the StreamYard stream. So I don't know what you guys are seeing. So it's a little uh, little dicey when you're trying to share on my end, because I know there's a yeah. bigger lag. Yeah, that's why. I, so so I'll police you when, when, when you're doing it, and you can police me when I'm doing it. <laughs> There you go. That sounds good. All right. I'm going to stop yeah. sharing this right now. Is that okay? Yeah, I already stopped. I already stopped it. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. Yeah. So Yay, anyway, okay. uh, in order to prevent that bleeding over, right, uh, use the spacing. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes you may be going too deep, just cutting too deep. If you're doing a, a if you're doing a profile on the letters, uh, you could be just using a V going too deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's see. You've got lots of good comments. Okay, we're going to 
we're gonna have to move move quick so we can make sure to nail everybody because we're already yeah. 45 minutes in yeah Ooh, doo, 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 doo. goodness okay let's see um so there's a few people who have the uh a uh, quarter inch, the one and a half inch surfacing bit. Um, shot diameter? Uh, yes, it is a quarter. Oh, it quarter is a shaft shank. shank. Yeah. 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 Quarter inch shank. Uh, yep. Okay. He was just answering. Bubba was just answering the, the question. Okay. Um, Jen had a good question about um, 817. Is epoxy going to be really hard on that surfacing bit? Just wondering how long you can expect um, that to last doing epoxy jobs with it. Okay, so Jen, the main thing with this bit is in epoxy in general is you have to make sure the epoxy is 100% cured. So it can be like soft to the touch but even when you're doing oh my god this thing weighs so much when you're doing epoxy this thick which is almost even two inches thick this is a four four day cure so you want to make sure that it's sorry it's like ugh. it's you want to make sure that your epoxy is really cured and it's going to last just as long as the other ones i will tell you when i do work with epoxy um just for the sake of my CNC, my dust collection and everything else, I do take smaller um, passes than what the bit is actually capable of. And that will save your bits as well when you're working with that surfacing bit and epoxy. Because usually when like, when I took that out of the mold, you know, I've got like places where the weights were on it and like the tape was stuck to it. So it kind of has like these high and low points. So you kind of just have to pick a point and then start going around. And then once I get it to a good level spot, I will, like, once I get down where the actual wood is, I'll take it down about, oh, I don't know, 0 0.05. And then I'll go down to the 0 0.01 full depth. And that's how I get that smooth. Um, uh, okay. Jason has popped on board. And... Um, uh, Facebook user said, love the table. So Facebook, uh, if right below the Facebook video, you can click show your name and your name will pop up. Because right now to us, yeah. this is how it shows to us right now. It says Facebook yeah. user with no face. And we like to, we're all, we're all friends here. There's, there's uh, Dan has uh -huh. come on board. So let's talk a little bit about um, business for a minute. You, you had a couple of questions today. Uh, yeah, we were talking and um, one of them. So f first of all, uh, for those who have come on late, right? The, and this is your first time. This is uh, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kate and I jump on live and we will help you with your CNC questions and we'll be on for an hour and a half. And yep. so we'll do whatever we can. Uh, we have links for things in the description. If you're on Facebook, the description is up above. And if you're on YouTube, it's in the description down below this video. And so uh, CNC Entrepreneurs is the Facebook group that I have. Um, yep. Women Who CNC is Facebook that Kate has. So if you're a female and it's like Welcome. no men allowed, right? Yep. Join no men allowed. Group. So sorry, fellas. No men allowed. Yep. And yep. Um, uh, we've been talking about the surfacing bit uh, that has been linked in this as well. And also uh, for new products, when I come out with new products and uh, IDC, uh, yeah. those on CNC insiders are know about that first. And I've got all the discount codes that I don't make public. Yeah. or greater discount codes right so even me uh, y'all i have it on my personal email and on my business email because i do not want to miss those announcements so right. go sign up for the cnc insiders because it's a it's a great you get all the good you get all the good stuff yeah so yeah. and i got two things the beast is going to be coming out which is a uh i, I expect a report next week kate on our live <laughs> the beast. No, i'm terrible yeah, I'm sorry. and uh, yeah, and the three sixteenths compression bit that is coming back in stock in just oh, a day or two. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. so because I that got sold out in four hours, and and yeah. all the CNC insiders. 
they were all they, they they wiped me out in no time and there was still like a a, a huge amount of them that, that were like crap you just ran out you know can i can i still have the discount right because i give you i discount. didn't even get one you want <laughs> i said i didn't even get you one. didn't even get one i didn't even get even a chance two to get emails <laughs> i didn't even get a chance to get the dang thing i was like That's oh, oh my god it oh, it's all right okay okay so oh, what, so sorry. So this whole live started um, several months ago where uh, Kate asked me to give her some mentoring. And I said, well, and they, you know, I'll do it live, right? Because we got to help other people. Mm -hmm. And she was all on board, right? And um, so we've been doing that for about, uh, we did that about 10, 10 things, 10 episodes, uh, 10 episodes right? And um, yeah. We, just for those who have not been on this before, what was your take on this mentoring to get? So, so the mentoring was about getting to the right business mindset, right? Yes. Many of us start a business, but we really don't understand what it takes to start a business, right? And yeah. business all starts up here. And it, it's it, not only you don't know what you don't know, but you don't know what you need to know that you got to go know to, in order to get there. And, and then you got to get it in here as an automatic thought, right? Yes. It, it has to be part of your new way of thinking. And so mm -hmm. the way we think, if we're struggling with business, it's a result of how we understand what we need to be doing. <laughs> yes, and so, absolutely. Uh, there were a lot of fundamental of, things I needed to know. Yeah. And it's foundational. That's all the foundation. We, I mean, we never, we, we did talk about how to price stuff to help some people who are asking about that. Yeah. Um, but it's not just how to price stuff, but how to find your right customer. So you can charge, you don't want to make, you don't want to have a customer that's going to give you challenges all the time. You want a customer that's yeah. going to value who you are and value what you have for them. And they value themselves and it's all relative to their own sense of value. So we have to raise our own sense of value to get them the same energy level with that type of customer. Amen. Amen. Yes. So my question yep. to you was, um, what type of marketing? I'm kind of struggling with uh, some marketing and coming up with a logo. I know I have um, some of my ladies from my group in here, and I am working on a Women Who CNC logo um, for the type of things that I'm working on coming out with. And it's like, what do I want that to say about women who see and see? Because it's not just about me. It's about my, it's about my avatar. It's about my group of people that I identify with and that my customer identifies with. So what do I want my logo to look like? And just to say, I know how it feels. But Garrett called me out on that, and he was like, "I went through a lot of changes. I've gone through a lot of changes with my with my personal logo. I think it's been like three or four different things so far, and now I'm still like, I really like it, but it's not as clear as I want it to be. And so there's all these like inner working parts that we kind of have to like, like an onion. I just kind of have to like peel it back, at layer out of layer, layer by layer, and figure it out. Right." Yeah. Um, so, so the, the logo, the, the, it, and you want to create a, like a, a sticker or whatever, you want to make t-shirts, merchandise, right? Uh, so yeah. people, other women who see and see, and you want it to represent something. So yeah. what, what most people do when they create their business and they will kind of think, okay, I'm going to call my business Johnny's Woodshop. Right. And, mm -hmm. And then they come up with a logo and often it's a saw blade, right? Or, or, yeah. or something like that. And something really the, woodworky. It, that's okay, but you want your logo to, to have the, everything that we do as people, we, when we see, we have emotional context to everything. Yes. And, and, and if we, and so we have to take that into account as to what do we want our market to understand what our product represents. Yes. Um, the IDC Woodcraft logo went through many, many renditions because I know I wanted it to have a certain emotional feel at a pretty deep level. And and the the feel, uh, it took about three months to refine that. Right. That's how much effort and thought goes into that. And a lot of 
uh, it's obnoxious talking to people yeah and talking to people and getting their feel i'll give it to them says what does this make you feel like when you see this right and so now it yeah. got to that point it's got that 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 semi truck feel the ford tough kind of feel right that's what yeah. i want the idc uh logo to represent right so with mm -hmm. you <clears throat> you know you have women who see and see and so you what what this is not just for you but this for everyone who's in business i want you to think about the question we're going to ask kate what do you want your avatar your avatar is your ideal customer market right you don't want to sell to everybody you want to sell to a certain type of personality a certain demographic a financial demographic um mm -hmm. but what do you want that to when they see that logo what do you want them to feel for what me, does per, women for me. yeah what does women women who see and see what does that represent to you as as a woman who is in the state where you're at and what we've talked about i want women to feel empowered um capable that this this is doable this is attainable i want it to give a feeling of uh strength and i want people to see it and be like women who see and see wow like okay i know what a cnc is but like there's a group of women like that's badass and I, I don't know i just i have like i have this whole feeling like very significant like emotional attachment to it and i just want it to be kind of in like kind of in your face a, like a little bit i want it to be when you see it you're like yes you're so gonna what, remember what? you're gonna remember it yeah what's your avatar going to feel when she's when she's wearing that hat that has that logo on it or wearing a t-shirt that says women who see and see and they, they i wanted to feel energy. i wanted to feel proud like yes like damn yes like now, this is my shit. <laughs> like i got this got this yeah i don't know i get kind of weird about stuff like that because i know um I, I know it's going to sound like a really weird cliche, but like when you're a mom and a dad and you put on like your son's, like whether it's like when my son, when my sons were in high school football and we would wear like their old jerseys or whatever with their names across the back and their number, you just felt so proud. Like even as a mom or a dad, you're like, that's my kid. Like, mm. yeah, like look what he did. He's out on the field. Like, I don't know when you see and see like somebody's going to ask you about it like somebody is going to ask you and i know it's that that's what i want you to what you just know like when you feel really really good you're just you're in it you know you just you feel good about yourself you feel like your self-esteem is like up a couple notches All i feel right. like that about anything that like i want to support or i want to wear or when i worked for my investment firm and i wore my Edward Jones logo across, you know, when I went out anywhere, I was like, I represent this company. This is a good company. Like I am proud to wear their logo and to, to be a part of this. And that's what I want my women to feel. I'm part of something that's bigger than just myself. I represent a collective of women. So, okay. Yeah. And, and, but, but they are also, and you said when you're telling me about it today, you know, there's, you want them to have a sense of empowerment, right? Mm -hmm. All right and so yeah. you've got your 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 women who cnc and <clears throat> your avatars is someone who finally wants to come out on their own right after they've been kind of invisible mom right just uh doing the stuff and their their yeah. identity was kind of put aside in their role as, as, a, as a housewife whatever yeah. um and so it's to symbolize she's coming out on her own and she's it's time she's not gonna be stopped you know i'm, I'm doing this <laughs> shit. Uh -uh, you know get out of my way yeah right. exactly i mean it's the same thing for like when guys wear or you know or men and women they put on their favorite sports team jersey or they put on their favorite university hat or whatever it is you feel like or you know where you graduated from college when you wear that you feel a sense of pride like somebody's gonna ask you hey did you go to that school and you're gonna be like yeah me yeah yeah i did it was awesome like that's what you know people okay. are gonna see 
I don't know. People are going right. to see that. So all those who are watching who are interested in doing CNC business, you want to sit back and think, what does what is this logo that I'm creating? What is it going to represent? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so the logo is, is, is it leaves an impression, right? behind it it's what you do that supports what the logo is right but uh um but the logo is an impression and first impressions count all the way around right yes. and that logo needs to have a certain impression right and, and so uh, ladies who are watching you know it's go into the women who cnc group and give kate some suggestions or give suggestions here guys yeah. we can't relate to what she's trying to do Right, uh, we can give ideas. We we can give ideas. I mean, my idea was Rosie the Riveter, but you know, that's I'm not Kate. I'm not women who CNC. I'm not the woman who's busting out of out of her shell finally. You know, so so you know. Um, yeah. Well, I would say you know, put it put it to your group too, and you go back and revisit your avatar. What is going to be? Yeah, I did kind of think about that a lot. What would she want? Yeah. What? What would? Yeah. But what, what would Ivanka like? What, what would make? What Ivank? What would Ivanka is the name of her avatar? Yeah. Um, Innovative right, Ivanka. Avatar. Yeah. And <clears throat> what would give her a feeling that you want her to have? It's all about feeling. Yeah. Right. Just a sports pride. team is a sports team. Uh, you know, a president is a president. It's how we feel about it and how we're proud to to express yeah. our, our, our our side of it right mm -hmm. and so that's that's Ivanka's got to get something out of that she just has to feel something when she's wearing that that's you know I'm yeah. part I'm part of the girls team man we we're, we're at it right so yeah. you might want to you might uh, want to put that to your to your girls yeah I've got, so some, I've got some I've got really good ideas of kind of like the idea that I'm looking for, but I'm absolutely open to other suggestions because mm -hmm. I feel like that's where the best ideas come from. It's when you're yeah. just, it's collective and then everybody's kind of involved in it. And it just, it makes you feel like, yeah, we did this together. This was awesome. It's not just one person mm -hmm. making all yeah. the decisions. The, the way I found mine was, I there's a, a group, there's a 99 designs. Right, and it was, it was a little pricey. It was a little pricey. I, I paid it for the highest value I could get. I paid over twelve hundred dollars for my logo. Oh wow! But but it goes out to multiple designers, and they come up with their own renditions. And you, I don't oh, wow. like that. I don't like that. You start rejecting them, and then you can go refine. And you go through steps, uh, oh. you know, and and you know refinement steps, and then you get to a point. Okay, I'm going to put these five out to my group and let them vote on it. Right, and and nice. and it even has a poll feature in it, so oh. so they can tell what they feel about each one, right? A, a, That's or cool. A text feature, yeah. So it worked out really well. Nice. And well, I like I like that point. idea. That's kind of cool. Yep. Um, Ninety nine right. designs. Ninety nine designs. I'm gonna write it down. All right, we should probably we'll get, get a back couple to answering some here. questions. Yeah. Um, my designer now, that's the only guy I go to. He's lightning fast and he works with me. Yeah. Does but he you want to, you want to get, he does, but he may not be the right one for you. Kaizen okay. creative, but you can only get them through 99 designs. Okay. I can send you. I do have a guy that I, I really like. Um, his Instagram is edit spill. I have him kind of a shout out on my page. He's, He's done some of my um, animation work, and he's great. I really like okay. him. Uh, okay, we got a question from Edward. Well, what is the best way to cut dado joints and joint cabinets together? I haven't done joinery. Have you? I've done some joinery on the CNC, but not a lot. I use the box gadget. Um, quite a bit when I'm in Vectric Pro. It's just under gadgets on like the very top bar in Vectric. Um, the problem is, is if you don't, there's a lot of trial and error on the CNC. Um, you kind of have to play with them and find your right allowance off of the box joints. Um, 
you know, honestly, I don't make cabinets. I've never been a cabinet maker. Um, I've made small boxes and things like that. So I wish that I could be more um, helpful, but if you're trying to make it on the CNC, I would, I would suggest trying that allowance because um, you can either do um, dog ear tabs or uh, dovetails, dovetails, and you can try either one of those, but you really have to work with like uh, the dog bone fillet or the, um, I guess, I guess it just depends on what, I mean, there's so many different ways to, you know, put cabinets mm -hmm. together. I would, I would recommend checking out the box maker gadget. If you're not sure what that is, you can look it up on YouTube or on Vectric. They actually have a gadgets section and they have like 5,000 different gadgets you can use. They're really cool. Yeah, so. yeah, the gadgets, the gadgets for Vectric are cool. They are not available in the desktop version of, of VCarve. Yeah. They're only available on the VCarve Pro. So, yeah. but neither one of us are cabinet makers, so unfortunately, we are not so the sorry. ones to be talking to. But sorry about that. Yeah. Um, there are some. There are some people that do that on on YouTube. So I yeah. don't know who's like the master at it. <clears throat> you guys use Light Burn. Kate uses Light Burn. I do um, use light burn. I, yeah, I have, uh, I play with it a little bit, but not as much as I probably should. Yeah. I really like light burn over the Vectric. Um, I actually have both because I didn't know what I didn't know back, you know, when I first started. So I bought the light burn software and I also bought the Vectric um, laser module. And they work great, but I think there's a little bit more to that question. So maybe um, Adventure Mate, if you're still listening, pop that question in, and we'll try to circle back to you. Yeah, the uh, light burn. So what, Louisiana hobby guy on YouTube. He's like the best light burn guy out there. So Louisiana hobby guy. Um, he's, he's pretty good. So can i recommend a video on how to manipulate 3d vectors in aspire so um neither kate nor i have played with the aspire version of the vector software so i cannot but i can lead you to bull shanigan in the facebook group called the make m-a-k-e um bull sometimes shows up here and he is very good with with the 3D modeling, he understands the whole process. He's really good with light burn as well. And he also will do one-on-ones with you, which Kate will do one-on-ones with you as well. So there are there's links. If you want to work in the Vectric software and you're stuck on mm -hmm. something in the Facebook uh, description or above this video, uh, her contact info is there. And I think the Calendly link is there too. And that's where you can actually schedule time. YouTube link is down below. Check the check. Just check the links in the descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> it's here. It's there. It's everywhere. All right. All right. All right. You can um, get it on a plate. You can get it in a boat. You can eat it on a. <laughs> it's who I am. Yeah. Oh, so gosh. Uh, Bill, Bill said use uh, free Inkscape. Uh, I'm not sure what he was referring to, but <clears throat> I don't like to use. Now, Inkscape's a design software, right? And it's free. Um, I don't like to use one software to do. What I like is when, like with Vectric, it's got the CAD, the computer-aided designing, where you design up your project, and the CAM, where you build up your tool paths, all in the same software, right? Yep. And you just switch back and forth. Inkscape has the designing capabilities, but then you yep. have to go get a CAM software in order to run your tool paths. Yeah, so and actually, um, nice. yeah, Inkscape is not capable of that. It is a free Inkscape. It's Inkscape is great. I actually um, personally use Inkscape a lot for a lot of my design stuff, especially when I was doing my sign business and I was doing my Vinyl Master stuff. I would design in Inkscape and then use my Vinyl Master software for um, cutting those designs. But it is a little bit more advanced and it does take some time to learn. So I would say if you're going to be Vectric or inkscape for learning if you're new to the software on either um, platform i would highly recommend that you just stick with vectric because you're gonna like garrett said you're gonna have that cad and you're gonna have the cam all together and it's best just to try and learn one software if there's something very specific you're wanting to try an inkscape that's fine but if you're just learning and trying to cnc at the same time stick with vectric and just 
work work with that. That's going to be your best advice. All right. And uh, so this was uh, the hand the hand pink waving hand pink waving. Right. <laughs> Eddie's custom cabinets. Right. Uh, there so you for go. The, for, the, for the joinery. Right. Find Eddie's custom cabinets, and it, there you go. maybe he Two can lead you down the right path. Yep. Yeah. And he's got a waving pink hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what do you? What that was is uh, apparently he put in the icon of waving hand. Right? Oh, it, hey. And it, hey. Yeah. Is it possible? Uh, uh, Vcarve Crow to scarf a joint. Like when you have to glue two boards to get better surface area. Is it possible in VCarve to VCarve Pro to scarf a joint? Like when you have to glue. I'm two not boards a joinery to a, guy. To get a better surface. So I don't know area. what a scarf a joint is unless you're talking about tapered. Is that a scarf scarfing a joint? I have no idea. Like I'm not a joinery person either. I don't. No. No. Um, I'm the sign sign girl, yeah. Sign sign sure sign person. Can. Yeah, yeah. I'm so we're gonna have to look that up. <laughs> scarf a joint. I know what a <laughs> scarf around my neck is, but not a, a, a scarf on a <laughs> joint. Of this. Uh, but uh, I, I've always glued two boards flat, All right? And uh, Looks so, but for me. If, yeah, but somebody will comment what scarfing is. Somebody yep. help help Kate and I teach us. Yes, please. I see we've got some new. I see um, the adventure mate commented again. I have done over fifty uh, lithographs. That's pretty oh, cool. So if there's anybody good. that wants to know about more lithographs, the adventure Find this mate guy is your right man. All right. We were just making all kinds of good connections. Look at that. Tonight. So there you guys. You two, you two can connect, right? He, he does. Well, no, he does lift the graph. So whoever's looking for the lithograph, talk to this guy. Here you right? go. And uh, and the adventure Very guy. Very good. Go find, go find the other guy there, the cabinet guy. Cabinet maker. Yeah, I love that too, because there's so many things. People, there's always when you tell people you're when you I tell people you're a woodworker, they're like, "Oh, so you make you make cabinets?" I'm like, "No, I don't make spoons, and I don't make cabinets. Those are the two things." <laughs> right, right, right. The question oh. comes is, how do you guys connect with each other? So. Here's how here's how you connect with each other. Number one, comment. Let's see. So they're both in the YouTube, right? So find each other's comment in YouTube. It looks like you're right below each other or uh, three Close. below each other, right? So comment to the other guys, right? And then also in CNC Entrepreneurs, join the CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group and and try to find them there. But right there, your comment. One of your comments is right right above and below the other one. So just or like take right a there. picture hey. with your phone. If you're on your computer, like take a picture. If you're on your phone watching this with YouTube, like go back up to where he was and then like take a quick screenshot of it. So then that way you have it if you you know forget if you're like on the go or listening or whatever. That's what I always yeah. do. Okay. All right. Okay. Kenny just got his his uh long will. Excellent. Yay. Hey. Nice. Also, everyone, if you don't have the app for your phone, the CNC router bit app from IDC Woodcraft, get it on your phone. It's free. You can get it so for your nice. Apple. You can get it for your Android. And it has all the bit information in there for every router bit that's in the IDC Woodcraft store. And so your software, Vectric, Carve, Carve, Carbide Create, CarveCo, and Fusion 360 the databases, tool databases for all the IDC Woodcraft bits are there. Go to the IDC Woodcraft website. It says database downloads. And uh, yep. click that and your database will be in there. And we are going to be updating it very shortly when I am done with the beast data. I have to run the beast on, on this guy because the long mill cannot handle the, the, what I'm going to be putting it through. Have you done that yet? It, it just it just can't handle it. No. It's, uh, have you have you run yeah. your big log of maple with your beast? Mm, not yet. I just finally got the threads fixed on the, on my spindle. My threads. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Issues. Literally today, wow. I got it fixed. I got the a new new nut, and so I had, just had to work it back and forth a little bit. Always using oil. And then after I get a just like a quarter turn out of it, so I'm really having to work it because it, it actually messed up the threads a bit. Yeah. And then I have to take it all back off, blow everything out, 
Got to put it back on and uh, more oil and just work it. It took me about two hours to get threads cleaned. Uh, I've got to take mine apart and clean it. I'm like dragging on that. I need a new spoil Always. board. I need to clean my machine. I'm just like, Ugh, yeah. who wants yeah. to do that? Yeah. Whenever you change your router bit, uh, always change, always clean out your collet. Um, always clean out the collet. Uh, if yeah. you get new router bits in, it's always a good idea to take soap and water and get any oil off of them. The big body bits that I have generally have, uh, some of them have, they come in, they're just, they're, they're soaked in oil. Right? Yeah. Keep them, keep them fresh. And you want to get that oil off, soap and water, clean them off, then take the air gun and blow it off real good. Yeah. Uh, even even your shiny bits, right? Your ones that don't appear to have oils on them. Yeah. You still want to get them all cleaned up. Um, how do you buy 3D files or do you make them 3D and V-carve? Well, Good, right? uh, you can buy 3D files uh, from basically anywhere. There are a lot of um, different websites a lot of different makers that you can buy them from um i found a couple different reputable people on etsy that i really like um i will try to pop back in on this feed after or in the comments later on because i'll have to go look them up and find them um well, send me send me the links and i'll get them into the okay yeah i'll do that um after the show wraps up and then or do i just make them uh, 3d and v carve you cannot make 3d models in vectric it's just not a not a capability in, in v carve v carve i'm sorry not in vectric in v carve uh, yeah you can't do it in 2d cut 2d you can't do it in the v carve but you can do it in the aspire yes aspire sorry my bad i don't use aspire that often um if at all so it's just not not something i do it's a very so tell you what, intricate process. Yeah, to tell you what the difference is. Cut 2D versus V-Carve versus Aspire. Um, cut 2D, uh, since I haven't worked in it, I don't know some of the options that are not there, but I don't believe that you can do a V-Carve with it. All right, and a V-Carve. I've got something. Okay, so uh, this is a V carve here. Did I tell you I love my long mill? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna so get one up. That says, is, I love my one infinity. There you go. Do it. Um, a V carve <laughs> is is done with a V bit, right? And you can see the letters vary in thickness in various areas, right? Mm -hmm. So a V bit can can literally, as it's moving through its path, it can move up and down basically. Uh, to compensate for the changing width of the letter. That's a V-carve, right? And yeah. the, the V-carve gives you a lot more capability as far as accents like this, where I think in the uh, Cut 2D, I think you don't have the V-carve capability. And, Let me show you something really quick. Okay. Um, in the V-carve, you have quite a few more features in it. The... Um, you have the V carve capability. What's Kate going to show us? <laughs> so don't don't be too judgy because I had my daughter help me and she used the paintbrush, but this is like a V carve. There you go. Yeah, you got so, lots of intricate. Yeah, lots of intricate well, depths and um, like where you've got your V carve. Can't really see it in my thing here, but um, this was a gift. Um, going to be a gift for my mom. For their patio because it just sets flush but this was actually a round i found from one of my local wood suppliers and it's going to get a little more polished up and some other fun stuff but i love v cars they're 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 great right right and something like this doily here yeah, this is that's cool. you, i can't even i can't even show you the detail in this the camera won't pick it up yeah um, this neat. took about an hour and a half to engrave that's done with a 30 degree V bit. And I have made that's that's available for free. I can't remember what video that's I made neat. that with. Um, done with a 30 degree engraving bit. Yeah. Super, super detail. I mean, it's it's got like you just can't see the detail in the camera. You can't see it. Wow, that's neat. Um, I like wow, a 30 degree cool. V bit. Yeah. So that's that's like an engraving bit. When uh, so what's an engraving bit? It's when you can do really tiny. Th 
thin stuff where you're not going really deep, right? It's just yeah. it's shallow cuts. Teeny right? tiny. That's, that's, yep, that's when you're thinking engraving. So the Vectric Cut 2D and the Vectric V-Carve, they both have the design side, the CAD, and they have the CAM side. So you do your design and then you switch over and you create your tool paths, mm -hmm. right? And the as you go up, uh, from cut 2d to v carve you get more features if you go from the the desktop version of either one to the pro version of either one you get a lot more features desktop yeah. limits you to 24 by 24 and then you have to go into tile projects right mm. so that's why the pro is good if you have a larger machine anything over 24 inches by 24 you just want to go with the pro versions yeah. the aspire version has everything that v carve has in it Plus, it has a 3D modeling capability. So you actually create 3D models, right, Oof. in the in the Aspire version. I, I haven't even I attempted haven't... to do that. I don't know that I ever will. No, just... right. yeah. yeah, that seems a little hairy to me. Yeah, no, they're right. So. It's, a, it's a different skill level, right? So um, yeah. it, it's, it, it, there's designing and then there's 3D modeling. The two yeah. different animals. <laughs> but... Mm. But yes. V-Carve, you can import 3D models into. Yes. I think Cut 2D, you cannot. No. Say that again. I don't think you, you can't. In the V-Carve, desktop and pro, you can import a 3D model into it. Yes. Yes. You can't design a 3D model, but no. you can import it. Yes. In the Cut 2D version, I don't think you can even bring in a 3D model into that. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm not I'm not sure, but I was going to say. No. I don't think so. I After see there's all, a bunch of people. Like <laughs> see, there's a bunch of people chatting, chatting about the lithographs and the 3D yeah. models. Dan had some good info, Dan. Um, hey, Dan. Welcome back. Um, hey, thanks for the sub. I saw you subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Um, I see uh, Dion at 839. No. He said, uh, thank you, Kate, for the Montana Gold spray paint tip. I'm amazed by the spray control and how it will surface dry in 10 minutes. It's good stuff. Tell them, tell them about it. Bring, yeah. Bring the, share so, the wealth, Kate. So the Montana Gold spray paint. Oh, gosh. I have like a bajillion of them. Um, they come with different, they come with different nozzles that you actually will get. And if you do not, if you order from the Montana Gold um brand even on amazon or anywhere that you buy their paint if you do not get a little baggie of separate tips reach out to them and they will send them to you um they should come with your spray paints if they don't they may have changed it up a minute um and it may be like a buck or two extra to get them all but it makes i mean you can spray really wide or you can spray really narrow and fine it's it's great paint to work with i personally really enjoy it over any type of like hardware spray paint that you have to try and send me you know, an or a mask over or anything like that. It's just the Montana gold is fantastic. And they have like different lines of their paint and you can get like their, um, their highest uh, price spray paint. I personally, I really like the gold. I think that's what I use. I'll, I'll make sure Garrett gets a link and you can, and you okay. can look make sure it's below. affiliate link. Yes. I'll make sure yes. it's my affiliate link. Yep. So affiliate get a little link. kickback so, off that. Yeah, yeah. So affiliate link is uh, many services allow you can do it as a business person if you're creating content or or posting in Facebook and you're uh, saying someone's asking yep. about how you're you're working with somebody. See if uh, that organization has an affiliate uh, thing. You mm -hmm. sign up for the affiliate thing. Amazon has it, right? Yep. And so you put you get their code. It's, it's a link. It'll take you to their product. doesn't cost any different, but as someone who has uh, been the, the, the pathway that generated a sale, you get a little commission. All right. Yeah. So that's what it's great for you is. as a business owner. Get a little yeah. bit of a kickback. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and that's okay. So Jack has uh, finally come on board and uh, Sam, Sam Coleman's here. here too. Okay. So Jack, there's been some talk about lithophanes. You've been missing the good stuff, the stuff, I, but I told him about what you have sent to me. Uh, yes. uh, so, uh, yeah. So, 
you might want to scroll back through the comments to see how these guys have been talking about each other. But I told them, Jack's the expert, expert at lithophane. But Dan now is a lithophane maker as well. well. We've got all kinds of lithophane going on up in here. All right. Uh, hey, Jeff. All right, I think this is Jeff. Who's over 66. First time here. Good evening. Yeah, it's Jeff. And uh, yeah. where can I find the speeds and feeds? For the 1.5 surfacing pit or hardwoods like oak. Um, okay, so again, go into the IDC Woodcraft app and you have filters that you can use. Mm -hmm. All right, so you go to the IDC Woodcraft app, um, click into it. I should install that on my computer so I can show people but you click yeah. into the surfacing bits then you click onto that bit and then it you can select what router type you have you can select whether you want inches or metric uh, imperial or metric and then you can select the the, the wood you have i mean there's kind of a limit on on wood people have asked me can you make can you can you put you in there and purple heart in there and <laughs> and all it's like i can't have a list miles long right I mean, oh just, gosh so, yeah but, that'd be but a, that'd be a, interesting. Yeah, you'll find that in there. Um, with oak, though, you know, I I generally set at about I, my rule of thumb is if you have the Makita trim router, I I set the router on three. I will take maybe a point one at one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty inches per minute on oak. Yeah, That's and if fair. a point one feels uh, maybe point oh seven. Because you're you're taking a much wider area, so yeah, I was gonna say point one seems like quite a bit. Normally, um, I would run like zero point zero five, and then I would go back and do the zero point one. I would do it in two passes. If that's just me personally, I'm a little more conservative, but I I like to baby my servicing bits because they are, you know, I I like to keep them around for a long time because I don't know. I'm kind of a weirdo. Uh, I use them all the time. So I'm always like, oh, don't overdo it with a bit. Just I want to keep it as long as I can. Uh, hey, Sam, uh, uh, Colin, uh, Jen said she's only about 30 minutes away from you. So, Oh, that's maybe cool. Can, yeah, maybe you guys can buddy up. Yay, um, Canada. She's so cute. That's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, you guys would you guys would have a blast together. Sam, Jen is really, she's very talented. Very cool. You guys need to like look each other up and. Okay, yep. So oh, Sam already connect. Sam already responded to her. Said, "Hey, let's connect." So we're, we're Kate, Kate and I are behind the times. Again, already. I know we're like trying to like <laughs> scroll down through the comments. Um, uh, I see a comment in here hey. for me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Any suggestions for tramming on the long mill from front to back, side to side is easy. Yeah. Well, first I would uh, loosen the screws that are holding the 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 beam. Okay. There's not a lot of play with that. But you can loosen the screws with the beam, and then if that doesn't work, you can um, you can put shims behind the block that's holding the holding the the, uh, the mounter the mounter the router mount, and then if worst comes to worst, take a wrench and just a little bit. I've actually done that and it held. Hmm. That's interesting. So, I thought about that. Yeah, yeah. It's not the best way of doing it, but that's. Um, it's it's not usually that far out. So what was your what was the question that you found? Uh, it was Jack in the shop, uh, eight forty seven. He said, "Did you pour all of that at one time?" I think he is referring to my yes. my big beautiful. For some of those that popped on late, this is my two inch um, table. It's going to be a small table for my um, basement sofa. And this is, it's about two inches thick. Yes, I did pour all of this at once, Jack. Um, I actually pulled this out because earlier in the show, we were talking about uh, the ultra smooth surfacing bit. And I have not done any sanding on this. Like you can just like hear how smooth it is, but you can still see the ridges is about a 20% step over. Um, and I just oiled this side just to show. How so you did a 20% step over with it mm -hmm. rather than like an 80 yeah, no, I did not want, I didn't want an 80% step over because honestly, I've always done like a really high step over like that before on all my projects. And I just wanted to see what this baby was 
truly capable of. So I just lowered it way down and mm-hmm. I think it was about 115 inches a minute on about a 17,000 RPMs. So about a three on the Makita and it's butter. It's so smooth. It's like a piece of hot mm-hmm. Wonder Bread. <laughs> 1.5. 1.5. So, so, yeah, that, that puppy right there. Yeah. The ultra smooth. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, uh, yes. That, that, we worked on that design for quite a while before we got it refined down to where I was happy with it. Okay. I even have my final prototype here going, okay, I'm, I'm happy with it now. Well, it's that's, a good that's, prototype. That's Whatever you frame. did, it's it's perfect. Right. No, no, no feedback on that. It's beautiful. Uh, Jen, Jen said there are some grandmas in here too. There should be a grandmas who CNC group. <laughs> nice, I love it. I see, you know, Jen, uh, the majority of us are grandparents. Probably, um, I'm going to say probably 70 percent of those who are active in groups are grandparents already. Yeah, that's so did, cool, though. What, yeah, which one did you want? Oh, I was just. Um, it looks like Michael. Um, he said aloha from Kauai. Aloha. Okay. Here. My brother had just, yep, there he is. My brother from Hawaii was just here and he lives on the big island. Um, ah, so, yeah. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't live, he lives in the middle of Waumea. Uh, not, yeah, is it Waumea? I think it's Waumea. I think that's the name of the town. That's cool. Yeah. That's how I'd love to live in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. But he's, he's been around that for a long time. What is Chris saying here? Kate, you might consider using a female teaching, a male style. Imagine Image. the highlight women. I got to read that again. Image you like? Oh, he's talking about your logo. Oh, okay. You might consider using a female teaching. Oh, okay. I like it. Very creative. Very creative. Thank you, Chris. I There's, like that. You get you get ideas coming. You know that this yeah. is how it kind of works too, right? When you're trying to build a business, one of the things that you always want to do is not try not to be a lone wolf. All right, don't try to go it alone. Most people go it alone. That's why they get lost, yeah. right? You need a ben- mentor. You need a guide. You need then uh, you need to you need to have uh, like a peer group or what they call a mastermind. Right. Yeah. A lot of I've run into quite a few people. Who, well, I don't want to give away my idea. People might steal it. There's eight billion people on the planet. You know, you, you cannot possibly corner a market. <laughs> right. And and most yeah. people yeah. are most people are out there to help others, especially when you're in business. You have to be if you're in a and you're if you're in the mindset that you're in a competition, then you're in the mindset of losing. All right. Mm-hmm. You That's need a scarcity to be, mindset. Um, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I work and communicate all the time with Sky One CNC. They sell router bits. Cody CNC, he sells yep. router bits, right? Um, and several other of the CNC router bit companies. We're, we're friends, right? We try bits to help each other. Bits There's all kinds yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I talked to Cody. I said, Cody, man, you make great bits, but you got to get out of the CNC router space. You, you bought a Five hundred thousand dollar machine. You need to start hitting industrial, all right? You need yeah. to get the big orders now, all right? It's just, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've but got some always, good work. always, always here to help, help each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I um, oh gosh, let's see. Um, Sam said, Kate, your new video clip looks awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. I um, edit spill on Instagram. I gave him a shout out on my Instagram page. He does my logo work. We were talking about that earlier and um, he does all kinds of really cool animation, but he works primarily with woodworkers. So he has like this whole plethora of like these really great ideas of like how to help create things. And I actually got his info from Sam because he did his, like you see that spinning saw blade. It just looks so cool on the end of Sam's, all of Sam's videos. And, um, he made one for me and he made it. And then I always forget to add the dang thing to the end of my Instagram reels. Cause I'm always like, it's like 10 30 at night. I'm always like post here we go. It's, I just, it's out there. <laughs> I always forget to add it. I'm so terrible about that. So yeah, anyway. that's one thing you, you do want to get in the habit of doing is like the, the woodcraft ones. I, that bit that comes flying in, you know, the, 
Yeah. Router bit flies in. I actually put that together myself. I had to piece that thing apart and use the the features in my in my um, my animation software, my video software, and then I went found some free sound bites of explosions until I found the one that I liked. And then, so that sound is actually the sound of an explosion. Isn't that, isn't that funny? The things that we do, my husband was getting yeah. irritated with me last night. I was sitting on Instagram and I was trying to find um, like a sound and I was like, yes, no, no, no. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to find the perfect sound for this reel. And he was like, how long are you going to do that? I'm like, I don't know until I find the right one. Then I found one. I was like, Oh, okay. Now I can go do it. I found the right one. Right. <laughs> it's just like, I don't, I couldn't live in your head. Like, I don't even know how to process what's happening right now. Right. Right. <laughs> but, but, but it's important. Yeah. It, it comes in it ex, it's an explosion and there's a bell sound. So I put both of those sounds and tweaking those sounds in microseconds to make them, everything come together. Just right. Took, took half a day. Isn't that insane? You'll sit yeah. there. It's like trying to edit YouTube videos. All right. So uh, Jerry is asking anybody having issues with the auto probe. So what he's talking about is the uh, the, the touch plate for the long mill, uh, which is a different configuration. The auto probe. Well, I got it right here. So this is the standard corner touch plate. Right, mm-hmm. so that it'll sit on the corner of the board, and the bit will come down and touch, and then touch both sides, and you're zeroed out. The that's what mine looks like for the one finity too. Yeah, I'm gonna find the auto zero, and then uh, so you can keep talking for a minute, Kate. Okay, well I'll just keep talking then. How about that? All right, so I see a lot of people chatting um edward johnson he said i just wanted to let you know i really appreciate your videos thanks i live in tennessee well edward i know garrett appreciates that very much because those videos do take a lot of time and effort to make um so i know he appreciates that i did want to say i did want to give a shout out i i saw someone earlier um it was way earlier in the in the show but someone on here is from shelbyville indiana and Mm -hmm. Whoever you are, Mr. Shelbyville, I will have to find him again. But I live um, I live right off London Road. So if you ever have questions or like you want to get to get together and have lunch and chat CNC, I would love that. So we are just literally around the corner from one another. See, we're, uh, this is the night of new connections. I'm just telling you. It is. It this is. This is the night of new connections. I'm so. Did you find that thing well, yet? No. I did not find it. It's on. It's in a toolbox right now somewhere. Um, shop is in disarray, but isn't it in most shops? I am working on trying to get the. Uh, so it's been put away in a toolbox, and I, you know, I could, I could find it, but it's, it's, it's within ten feet of me. <laughs> yeah, uh, the auto probe, though. Um, so um, I haven't. I, I like the auto probe and I use it quite a bit. Um, I have had an issue with it once though. So what the auto probe is on the long mill, it's, it's a, it's a different design uh, inside. It's got a flat and then it has four walls on it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's kind of a pocket with a cutout at the corner. And so the bit will come in and, it, and it's got a taper in the bottom. Mm. So if you're testing a V bit, it'll touch and you uh-huh. you can zero with a V bit. Well, that's kind of kinda cool. Yeah, so you can touch it, and then it, it'll just raise up just a little bit, and it'll come and find those four inclines, and it'll set the zero based on that, and then move over to its zero position. Nice. Um, yep, and it, it'll it can also touch the four walls. So um, very cool. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to play with it again before I can answer that uh, because I did have an issue once where came it, it found its zero points and it came over the wrong direction i've had mine do that a couple of couple of weird times for some weird reason it just gets like like it'll come over and then it like just keeps pushing it and i'm like what what are you doing where are you, where are you going so right. i know what you're i know what yep. you're saying so i will play with that this week and then maybe i can have an answer for you next week on that uh but 
describe the kind of problems you're having. Uh, All right, I see. We are at nine. We at nine thirty-nine. Yeah. Hour oh, we have gone way over time. Okay, we'll answer one more and then we got to bug out. Okay. Um, well, first, I want to say if anybody's interested in the scarf joint, Autumn265, she commented on there. So if you're interested in knowing what that is, she's she's hooked us up with the answer. Um, we'll try to get, I want to try and get through a rest of the rest of these really, really quickly. Um, so STL Woodworking, he said, Would you say your feeds and speeds on the app are pretty conservative? Yes. Yes, they are. It. They're they are intended to be conservative, right? You yes. start start conserv. I, I'd rather be conservative than aggressive, right? Because some people may break bits, especially beginners. Yes. Um, so Sam Coleman, he says, "Simple green works to clean bits." Yes, I agree. My dad actually owns a chain of car washes, and he lives by Simple Green. It's great stuff. Um, somebody said, "Er." Um, Oz, he says, so does rubbing alcohol? Yes, it does. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Harold is making wooden paddles longer than his machine, so he has to tie all that. Nice. I have no uh, tiling videos. I've never had a need to find tiling. You know, honestly, I've never really done tiling either because, like, my machine is on this, like, massive eight-foot table, and it's, like, dialed into the millimeter so if i like tried to pull it or move it to do a tiling project i would probably have an aneurysm just trying to make sure that everything is like <laughs> exactly the same way so yeah kudos what to i would do, in, do tiling well what i would do in a tiling is i would add, a, add another tool path that will drill locating holes mm. so you can so you can position reposition your part properly um Andy, I know Sam has tried? a good video on that on his Instagram of how he did it. He did a really okay. Good find Sam's it. find Sam Coleman designs and on Instagram. Yeah. Sign up and dig through that. Go look Sam stuff. maybe yeah. Have I tried to import an STL file into V card for a 3D carving? Yeah, do it all the time. Mm -hmm. right. It's uh, import under the file import, and then uh, it like says 3D model or something like that, and then you go get the file import it there's a whole process to go through as you import it um but yeah. we don't have time to cover that here yeah but that's actually in the modeling tab is where um yeah it's in the modeling tab is where you have to go in and import it you can't just import it like you would normally import like an svg or something like that it's under the modeling tab is where you have to bring that in it's uh stl says i love yeah. being an amazon affiliate Yes. Oh yeah, Amazon affiliate's great. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll just I'll just show you real quick. So I go right now. I'm in the drawing section and go under file if you can see it, and there is your import button right there. And then you yep. have import well, vectors, import bitmap, import 3D model, mm -hmm. and bring it in. Now you'll have other work to do, but uh, that's where you start at. Yeah. Man, we we're way behind on questions. Uh, really quickly, there's a suggestion from Dan uh, at 927. He said, with, I think he's talking in reference to the app, maybe instead of wood species, give a representative list of Junka hardiness? Well, so, yeah, I, I've thought about that, that hardness. So different woods have different hardness, right? And so they have to come up with standards, industry standards to be able to identify those hardnesses. It's like mm -hmm. in metalwork and you have Rockwell hardness, right? Um, the reason I won't do that, Dan, is because I am here to help, and so is Kate, to help new people. And that's way beyond, way beyond what they need to be knowing, right? Um, it's like uh, dealing with chip loads, Right. I'll do the chip loads. I'll figure all that stuff out when it's necessary, but I'm not going to complicate people's minds by giving them chip load calculations and say, here, set up your feeds God, and no. to that. That, right. that would be like um, way too much. That'd be way, way yeah. too much extra. Yeah. But thank you for the idea. We did actually toss that around. Um, so I think one really good. Oh, go ahead. Uh, we found that surfacing and grain like cookie is more difficult. So like a cookie like this. 
is it harder to surface like this? No, yeah, you just did one. What's what's the deal? Yeah. Tell them. I didn't have any problems. I think works works just fine. I don't um I do actually I start from um I start from the middle and I work my way out. I don't do the the back and forth. I personally like oh, you don't this. do the raster. Okay. I don't do a raster. And yeah, that's not that's not a bad idea because you're staying with the uh, with the grain. The, yeah, so it goes all the way around. So you said you saw one. Uh, yeah, Facebook user. He had a um. Oh wait. Time. Sorry, there were two Facebook users. I'm not sure if it's the same one, but he said, "Garrett, thanks again for my order of bits. I can't wait to try them out. I ordered your single O flute bits. I got my hands on some acrylic to test out." But then okay. later on, he said, or she, can I use the single flute bits for PVC also? Yes. I want the o, yeah, the O flute bit for the PVC. Yeah. Yeah. PVC, you go even faster. Yeah. I got, I got some, I got some expanded PVC here. You can just rip through that in no time flat. Yeah. PVC is great. PVC, once you go with PVC, yeah. it's like you never want to go back. <laughs> yeah that or the hdu oh that stuff is it's it's just it's so nice all right so all right i think that is it i think we've we may have missed a couple my apologies if we did no. um i think we no, had a well, lot of chat going on which is great so i apologize mm -hmm. if we missed some comments in the mix of that but if not we will catch you next wednesday Right here right. on either right YouTube here. or Facebook. All right. Same, same CNC time, same CNC channel. <laughs> with Garrett and Kate. We'll Garrett come up with a name. Yeah, or you guys come yeah. up with a name. That's your homework. You come this. up with a name. Yeah. You come yeah. up with a name. We'll have to come up with, not the Garrett and Kate show. That sounds too, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get creative. We'll figure here. it out. We'll yeah, figure it fun. out. Good fun. All we're right. gonna do it. We're gonna do a poll or something. We're gonna have you guys like come up with some goofball no, things. That's how, that's how we should handle that. Yeah. Let's do a poll. Let's, we'll give it to the audience. We'll put it to a vote. Yeah. So All right. okay. <laughs> All oh, CNC brothers and sisters, thank you for hanging out with us. I hope we got something out of this. We sure did because we got to hang out with you. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, we will talk our, to you later. See ya.